In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by the Australian Sports Sedan Association and the Grunt Performance Victorian Sports Sedan Championship. Welcome to a special edition of In Pit Lane. Well, as you can see, we're not in the uh, in the basement studio. It's at RMIT in Grand Prix City, Melbourne. We are, in fact, in a secret location in beyond the suburban curtain, where we're here at the uh, headquarters of Grunt Performance, and we're going to uh, we're going to have a tour around Grunt Performance a little bit later on. Liam Dunn, the uh, owner of Grunt Performance, is going to take us around and show us some incredible cars that are here. Um, being pre prepared at the moment, at least the ones he can show us anyway. And there are some very famous and some interesting cars here, as you can probably see sort of in behind us. Also, coming up in a couple of weeks' time out at Phillip Island will be the second round of the Grunt Performance Victorian Sports Dan Championship. And joining us will be a veteran sports dan racer, Chaz Talbot. But as we said earlier, we had a bit of a look around uh, a bit earlier in the day with uh, with Liam to have a look at the. Uh, no, I should just point out, incidentally, we have an audience tonight. We've got members of the Australian Sports Sedan Association. Give yourselves, make some noise, people. <laughs> there they are. We've, we've we've trained them well. We've trained them well. But we went around uh, with the with the guys from the sports sedans and had a look around Grunt Performance. So uh, why don't you come with us and have a bit of a tour around Grunt Performance, and we'll be back in just a moment. This is the Mons Molina, um, a really famous Australian-made um, sports car from the 50s. Um, currently owned by one of our clients. Uh, we've been doing a, a fair bit of work to the car to sort of get it back to where it needs to be. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful, iconic car, um, and it's an absolute pleasure to work on it. It's just, yeah, absolutely fantastic and a real iconic piece of Australian motor history. So. so the last time we saw this, it was at the, uh, the the National Gallery of Victoria. Is the plan to get it back on the uh, back on the racetrack again? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So we're in the midst of building a new engine for it now. Um, but yeah, definitely sooner rather than later. So this is a 430 GT3 car that we've been getting ready for a customer to compete in state level stuff. Um, the father and son are thinking about doing some of the endurance stuff together. Um, we've just recently re wrapped it and yeah, preparing it for some testing and development for both the father and son to drive. Um, it's, yeah, it's a really, really cool thing. Um, yeah. You're sort of going from the extreme here, aren't you? I mean, in terms of you know, going from the, the Monza and some of your other cars to something like this, where I imagine this has got all the traction control and all the mod con. Yep. Are they, uh, are they a hard car to work on? Uh, not particularly. A lot of, most of the hard work's already, already been done. It's, it's maintaining them, being vigilant with maintenance, etc. Um, yeah, like I say, a lot of the hard work's been done on these. They're finicky in the way that you've got to be very precise with setup, etc., etc. But they are, yeah. A lot of the hard work has been done, and they're really well set up. I mean, the people that build these Ferrari aren't silly. You know, you're not going to outsmart them. So, so the RX-8 is uh, Richard Opie, the owner of Bendigo Mazda. This is this is his car, and we built this from scratch for him oh, four years ago. Um, and Richard does the State Series, so um, really good car, um, fantastic platform, well set up. Um, so, what's the engine in this? Uh, 13B peripheral port. So, and then it runs a Hollinger uh, six-speed H-pattern gearbox. Uh, runs Brembo brakes, PFC rotors. Um, yeah, and it's, look, Rich is really, really doing well considering he's never, up until this car, he'd never been on the track. So he's doing exceptionally well. This is a Mark VI Bowl, or the Mark VI Bowl. So the, the only one in existence. Um, it runs, it's current state, it runs a Holden Red Motor six cylinder with a Hill and Transaxle. Uh, we've been running the car now for the owner, preparing it for the historics at Winton. Um, yeah, it's just a fan another iconic piece of Australian 
motoring history. Um, it's now, a lot of people would, of course, know the Bulbul from the Nagari, but this is uh, this obviously predates that uh, considerably. Yeah, it does. Uh, so this was the the fourth evolution, I suppose you'd call it, of the bowl. Um And yeah, brilliant car. The weight distribution's fantastic. Centre of gravity's fantastic. It's one of those cars, it's sort of before its time, really. It's, it really is a fantastic bit of kit. Um, and same again, privileged to work on it. It's a it's really interesting car and yeah, really well sorted. So. Well, when we talk about Holden uh, Australian Racing Specials, the car behind is a bit interesting as well. Let's have a look over here at the Milano GT2. So this is, this is one of three um, that were built. It's another Australian-made car, as you just said. Holden Red Motor again, uh, triple Webers, four-speed gearbox. Uh, and, yeah, one of, one of the best sounding Holden six cylinders I think I've ever heard. Uh, we've been running it for a client, uh, recently competed at the Historics at Phillip Island um, and yeah the owner's thoroughly enjoying driving it and yeah pleasure to work on again. If you want to come this way, through this way is our fabrication workshop. Uh, as I said before this is a completely independent room to the rest of the workshop uh, for multiple reasons. Noise dust, dirt, etc. So we've made a completely sealed room to contain all the messy work to one area and this is where we perform yeah, all the the dirty dirty work I suppose you call it. But Spe speaking of dirty work we've got uh, this is a Polaris over here is it not? Yeah correct so this is a Polaris that's going to be competing in the Fink uh, so we've been building the roll cages, all the radiator ducting, the uh, aluminium sheet metal work. So it's, it's nearing completion now. Uh, we'll send the, the chassis off to get powder coated shortly and then it'll be time to assemble it. So, um, yeah, so uh, this side of the factory is where we store the cars that are waiting to be worked on or cars that are ready to be delivered back to clients. Uh, the idea of these two hoists here is where we've got the ability to put the cars up in the air and show our clients either the work that needs to be done on the vehicles or the work that has been done without inter interrupting the flow of work in the workshop. Um, as well as that, the other cars in here, as I said, are cars that are waiting to be worked on. So whether it's time restraints, um, for our clients if they've they've needed to drop the car off at a certain time that we we try to work in with the customers time frames and then it allows us to then get onto the job without having to wait for the car to be dropped off we can we can get onto it straight away uh, this side of the factory i really like it sort of plays homage to the original building that it is um, and on the outside which you probably haven't seen the it's um yeah, like I said in the start, it's it's about 85 years old, and we really didn't want to lose the heritage of the building. And it's a it's a really cool environment to be able to, you know, have the originality of the building. Um, and it's a real nice contrast to the the modern side of the mechanical side and the fabrication side of the workshop. So you're watching In Pit Lane here on Channel 31 Melbourne and on the In Pit Lane YouTube channel. When we come back, we're going to be joined here to find out more about grunt performance by Liam Dunn. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. We're at the uh, headquarters of Grunt Performance and with us is the uh, man behind Grunt Performance, Liam Dunn. And uh, Liam, first of all, thank you for in inviting us here uh, tonight and uh, everybody from the Sports and Land Association. You've got so many cars around here, uh, well, which we've obviously had a look at earlier, but first of all, tell us about the, the background of Grunt Performance. I mean, where did the idea come from for this, uh, for this amazing facility? And also tell us a bit about the place. I mean, it's... Uh, it's a unique piece of uh, piece of architecture. <laughs> um, the business, the idea behind the business started. I used to compete myself, and it sort of got to the point where my main enjoyment out of competing was a lot of it was the preparation and building the cars, maintaining the cars, the organisation behind getting to the events, the logistics, and all the other side of it. So the thought process behind it was if I could do that as my living, as my career, as a business, it would be a business that I could sustain for here on into the future and not get bored with it because it's something that I'm really passionate about. So that was the main reason behind it is that 
Yeah, aside from the driving, I really, really enjoyed the preparation and everything else behind it. So, so tell us a bit about your career before Grunt Performance. Um, what were you involved in, in terms of racing and, uh, and also in terms of a job? Uh, my job originally was as a mechanic, so I'm a mechanic by trade. Um, I started a, uh, my apprenticeship at a place where we used to build a lot of off-road race cars. We used to do Outback Challenge, um, full drive winch challenge type stuff, as well as a bit of circuit racing and a bit of rallying. Um, so, yeah, really got a taste for that. I started when I was 15 and continued there for some time. After that, my old boss retired. So from there, I went on and worked for a dealership for some time. And that was really good in the way that it really gave me a grounding for organisation, structure, logistics, all the rest of it. Um, ended up managing one of the dealerships that I was working for um, until I was 21. And then after that, I went and worked for a pot rod place. We used to build and maintain pot rods, muscle cars, things like that. Um, but on the side, I was building up my own clientele and preparing and running my own rally car. So started off doing the Victorian State Circuit Racing, oh, State Rally Championship, and then moved on to the Australian Rally Championship. And we competed in the Australian Rally Championship on and off for three years and did the State Series for two years. So, so who, were you, uh, who were you looking after in the Australian Rally Championship? Oh, no, I was competing myself. You were competing yeah, yourself? Yeah, yeah. So what were you driving in that? In that? Um, it was Michael Guest's Evo 3. Yeah. So, yeah, competed in that. Um, bought it off a guy called Simon Jansen from Tasmania um, and campaigned in that for, yeah, three years. So, yeah, and previously to that, we uh, built and maintained... I built my own Datsun Stanza and competed in the... Victorian Rally Championship in that. So when was the first time Grunt Performance made its uh, its appearance? Oh, it started as a... Honestly, the name started as a joke with my old Datsun. Um, but, yeah, it sort of stuck from there. And I registered the business name to be able to give tax receipts to, to potential sponsors. And from there, it just sort of evolved. Um, I started maintaining competitors' cars, people I was racing against started maintaining and building cars for competitors. Um, seems my car was relatively competitive and well presented. Um, and then, yeah, the clientele built and built and built to the point where um, it got too big to just be doing it on the side. So took the leap and went out on my own and yeah, started the business, so yeah. So tell us about this place. I mean, it's, uh, what's, the history, what's the history of it? I mean, there is a motorsport history bit of it uh, in the Yeah, park, so the, the place itself is, we, we've been trying to dig around to find the real original heritage of the building. Um, there's mixed reports of what it was, but um, from what we can gather, it was about 85 years old. Um, one of the factories and the other factory is newer, but um, originally we, we bought the property by pure coincidence off a motorsport person as well, um, Paul Trevedon, we bought the place off him. Um, yeah, just by pure coincidence. Um, and yeah, since then, from purchasing the place, we had two factories in Dramana, um, and it was a very quick renovation. Um, we had four months to transform the place from what was to empty shells to what it is now. Um, so we, as well as working full time with the business um, and having a family, me and my wife, Steph, amongst having other help from other people, we transformed the place from an empty shell to what it is now in four months. So it's pretty intense, but yeah, absolutely wrapped with the result. It's fantastic. So. so obviously where we are now, we're in sort of the main area. We're, got, we're surrounded by a lot of interesting cars, which we saw, saw before. So this is sort of the main workshop area, I take it? Yeah, so this area here is where we do most of the race car preparation, um, the mechanical work um, and setup. Um, next, and then up on the mezzanine floor, we've got a place where we stack all our parts. Each bay's got its own car delegated to it, so all the parts from each vehicle go into their own spot. Um, and then in next door, we've got a fabrication workshop, um, which is completely sealed out. It's a all but soundproof room, which is keeps the dust, mess, noise all contained in one area, and allows the rest of the workshop to be quite quite nice and manageable. So. so how many cars have you got uh, running around here at the moment? At the minute, I think we've got 23 cars. Yeah, it's 23 cars in the shop. And that includes, you've got some road cars, some hot rods, or like a yeah, machine type Yeah, we do a little... Drag racing cars, yeah. as we saw before. Yep, so we do very limited, oh, selective restorations on muscle cars, hot rod type stuff. Um, so yeah, we do a little bit of that kind of work just because of some of my background is that, and I still do enjoy doing that. Um, so yeah, we do selected restorations and hot rod stuff, um, as well as a lot of fabrication. So we do a lot of roll cages, fuel tanks, 
intercoolers, etc., 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 as well as the race preparation and running cars for clients at events. So, what are the long-term plans? Uh, refine it. Not really wanting to expand any further. Um, the business is at a size that. I'm still really hands-on. Every job I have my hand on every job. Um, I don't want to get it to the point where I'm off the tools. Um, the way I look at it, there's, it loses a lot of the enjoyment for me. Um, I really want to be involved on each of the cars um, for multiple reasons. I enjoy it as well as the um, quality control side of things. Mm. So, yeah. Well, it's fascinating. I mean, everybody's been interested in it. We're surrounded by a diverse range of cars. Um, thanks for inviting us along. Thanks for inviting not just ourselves, but also the members of the Australian Sports Dan Association. Thank you for your support of the uh, Victorian Sports Dan Championship as well. I know it's very much appreciated by all the guys here and by all of us as fans of the category uh, watching at home. So for now, uh, Liam Dunn. From Grunt Performance, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Thank you very much. And I'd just like to say that, you know, it's a really, really good category to get behind. Um, everyone I've been involved with so far in the category has been fantastic. So thanks very much. Thank you for coming out. It's our pleasure. And speaking of sports dance and the Victorian Sports Dance Championship coming up at Phillip Island will be the second round of the championship. One of the competitors will be veteran sports dance driver Chaz Talbot. He'll be joining us in just a moment. Stay tuned. You're on In Pit Lane, Channel 31. Don't go away. Welcome back to In Pit Lane, coming to you this week from the headquarters of Grunt Performance here in outer suburban Melbourne. And coming up down at Phillip Island in, uh, in a week or so's time is the Victorian Sports Dan Championship, sponsored by Grunt Performance. And one of the competitors from the, uh, from the first round, and he'll be in action again at Phillip Island, driving his brand new Camaro, is Chaz Talbot. Chaz, welcome to In Pit Lane. Thank you, Brett. Glad to be here. Now, t first of all, tell us about the Camaro. And you, you, we had the uh, Corvette for a long time. You've sold that, and then suddenly we thought you'd sort of given it all away. And uh, suddenly, not only are you back with the Camaro, but also on the way through, you picked up a lazy Formula 5000 yeah, as well. Yeah, I found one laying around and thought I'd make use of it. Uh, the Camaro was uh, with a bit of a project. Uh, we had the Corvette before. Uh, wasn't happy with that. I had a few health problems too, which made it a bit tricky, and I thought I might try and do something else, but uh, couldn't help myself. We got into the Camaro and a few of the boys helping, and uh, that turned out to be a good thing. That was uh, basically our own design, and uh, it's a 2002 Camaro body. Uh, it goes quite well. I took it for a test at the island uh, on one of those club days that the Phillip Island Car Club has. And was quite impressed with the way it went. It handled well, stopped well, and um, then we had the uh, first round at at uh, Sandown, and um, it went very well there. We had a few few issues, uh, minor issues, uh, tuning issues. You know, the Sandown's very bumpy, so we had to play with the shocks, the bumps, upset the car, and um, it came good. It came good over the bumps uh, in the last couple of races. We had two thirds and a fourth, so a third in the series at the moment. Uh, it was the first time out in the race car. Was quite, uh, quite, we're quite happy with that. So where is it uh, different, where is it better, do you think, than the Corvette was? Well, the Corvette was basically an oval car. I, I, when I bought the thing, I thought it was a, a Trans Am car, but it turned out not to be. It was an oval car, and in America, you only turn left-hand corners on ovals. It was very heavy, very strong, uh, strong down the right-hand side, of course, their impact on the barriers, uh, at warp speed, they run into things. But the uh, suspension uh, was, was awkward. It was made to go around left-hand turns, and of course, we, we have to go around right-hand turns, and uh, it's a bit of a different, uh, a different story when you do that. So I decided to put it up for sale and uh, put a price on it and advertise it, and four days later, this fellow from Canberra rang me up and bought it, came, came down and showed up. And I thought, gee was I didn't put enough money on it. I was too cheap. But uh, anyway, he was happy with it and he's been doing well. Uh, it was what he liked, he, he enjoyed it. It was a good solid car. If you run into anything, that'd be the thing to be in. But the Camaro was a different thing. It's a purpose-built sports sedan, tubular frame, fiberglass body. The uh, frame was made to regulations, you know, for rollover impact and uh, side impacts. Uh, I had to make it a bit stronger in some places on the side impact to protect myself, move my car, move myself away from the side of the car to give me a bit more protection. And the car was surprisingly well balanced. It 
uh, handled well. Uh, our test day was at the island, of course. The island's very smooth, and uh, no bumps to uh, be a problem, and the sweeping corners, it, it really performed well on that. Then we went to Sandown, where we got a bumpy track. We had a lot of troubles with the bumps to start with. We had to tune the shocks to cope with the bumps. Played a bit with the sway bar, and it came good in the last race. Uh, Handling-wise, it came good. It was, it was up there uh, all the time, fourth, third. The engine was good. We were having problems uh, with uh, uh, breathing. breathing. The oil was breathing uh, out of the oil tank and making a mess, and the boys weren't too happy about having to clean that up all the time, but they did. So we think we'll fix that now. And that was a teething problem. We hadn't uh, anticipated that. Uh, in a test day, you wouldn't have been going fast enough for long enough, but on a race day, of course, you... Uh, so after the, after the pre previous round at Sandown, <coughs> with the, the round coming up at Phillip Island, what yeah. changes have you made to the car in order to prepare for Phillip Island? Uh, well, we've made, it, made changes to the oiling system, the oil tank, the collector tank, the pipes, the hoses, trying to get... Uh, trying to stop that oil breathing process. I'd been blaming the engine to start with because uh, we, we had a bit of a problem with leak down on one of the cylinders, but that turned out uh, that came good eventually, so it wasn't the engine that was the problem, it was the oil tank that was the problem. So that was a big modification to redo all that and shape the oil tank and put baffles in it. Uh, the car, we've done a few things with the uh, uh, rear suspension, sway bar, the way that's mounted, uh, the way the wheels are bolted onto the under the uh, rear axle. We had a few problems with uh, wheel nuts. But basically minor things. The rest of the car has gone well. Everything's worked on it. All the gauges, uh, the cooling system, the radiator, everything keeps the engine cool. Oil pressure's good. There's no problems with that sort of thing. We're very surprised with how good it was. Out so what out are your expect box. expectations for Phillip Island? Oh, we're going to win everything, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, that's the main thing. Yeah, that's the, uh, the ambition, of course, is to win everything, but it, it, there's other people who've got the same idea, so it doesn't always work out that way. So in terms of the entry for Phillip Island uh, coming up, uh, have you had a look at uh, who your main competitors are? I take it Rick Newman will be back. Oh, and... yeah, Newman was... Uh, he was surprisingly quick. I, I didn't think that thing would have been so quick, but... He was beautifully prepared car. Oh, it was marvellous. Yeah, you look around you here and all these well prepared cars, this, these boys here do a marvellous job, you know, I've done a bit of race restoration myself, but boy the stuff that they do is really good quality here, but uh, that Newman with that car, it's really well prepared, performs well, and uh, um, what's his name, uh, Paul Panisi, went well too in the, in the uh, touring car, the ex-touring car, and uh, and they're the main components that I've got to com compete with at the moment. Uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. We're a bit later into the season. Uh, can, weather's always a, a factor at Phillip Island. Uh, how do you think that thing's going to handle in the rain? With uh, how, how much horsepower you got? A lazy 700 or so? Yeah, or? just a yeah. tad over 700. Um, we've got the same basic engine that we've always had. Uh, this engine was in the Corvette. It's about 707 or 708 horsepower. It's got good torque though, I've been working on the torque to get the thing to pull better from a lower rev so I don't have to rev the daylights out of it all the time. And uh, it's, a, it's been a strong engine from the, from the low gears and the low, uh, low, low revs. Well, I'm sure if people, uh, if people want to head out to, to Phillip Island, and, and we do have some tickets to give away, incidentally, from uh, courtesy of the Phillip Island Auto Racing Club. If you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to head out to Phillip Island, all you have to do is go to the Inpit Lane YouTube channel, like and subscribe, and just say that you want some tickets, and um, a few lucky people will get tickets to the second round of the Victorian Sports Sedan Championship. Chaz, uh, good luck uh, on, on the weekend and we'll see you down there and uh, we'll be reporting on, uh, on all of your adventures on In Pit Lane uh, straight afterwards on Tuesday night. But for oh, now, good. once again, good. thanks yeah. for joining yeah, us well, in Pit Lane. Thanks for the opportunity, Ben. Really and enjoyed it. thank you to you at home for watching. Now, we'll be back in the studio next week. Before we, uh, before we end tonight, on, on a sad note, somebody that uh, you would remember, long-time viewers of the program would remember Alan Kempster. Alan was... Uh, Alan was a motorcyclist who came off his bike, lost his arm and a right leg. You would think that this would end anybody's motorcycle racing career. No, not in Alan's case. Not only did he continue to race motorcycles, he actually became a world water ski champion as well.
and um, we found out that just at the, pretty much at the end of last week's program that uh, Alan had, uh, had passed away as well. So I'm um, very, very sad to hear that. Also, long-time HQ racing, uh, racing driver here in uh, Victoria, in the Victorian state scene, Carl McHenry, of course, also passed away this week. So um, we've had a very bad run of late. So to the families of both Alan Kempster and to Carl McHenry, from all of us here at Inpit Lane, we do send our condolences. We'll see you next week from uh, once again back in the studio, but until then, from all of us here at Inpit Lane and all of us here at Grunt Performance, it's bye for now. Cup and feel the power. The gods of thunder roar again with the Grunt Performance Victorian Sportsland Championship. Round 2, Phillip Island, May 5th and 6th. For more details, www.sportsland.com.au.